Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the comedy movie titled, Trading Places. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A manservant called Coleman is making breakfast for a man called Louis Winthorpe III, shaving him, clothing him, and then driving him to Duke and Duke Commodity Brokers, a firm of which Louis is the CEO. Next up, the brothers Randolph and Mortimer Duke prepare to leave their estate to head into the city for business. Randolph and Mortimer arrive at the Heritage Club, and a crippled blind man asks for some change, but they tell him they have no money to give him and yell at him to get out of there. Later inside the club, Mortimer remarks they are about to make millions of dollars when Randolph suddenly starts talking about a scientist. Mortimer gets upset he's not too excited about all the money they'll make, and Randolph replies not everything is about money, saying their mother always said he was greedy. Later Louis arrives, who briefly stops talking with a few friends from Harvard who invite him to play squash, but Louis replies he can't, that he's dining with Penelope tonight, after which he walks up to Randolph and Mortimer. He picks up payroll checks they'll have to sign, and Mortimer thinks they are paying their employees too much, and Louis comments they can't get around the minimum wage. Louis asks about one person who doesn't seem to be an employee at the firm called Clarence Beeks who's getting $50,000, and they tell him Beeks is doing top secret research for them. They ask him about their grandniece Penelope, saying he'd better make an honest woman of her, after which they say goodbye. Mortimer comments they're lucky Louis is their CEO, but Randolph says Louis is just a product of environment, however Mortimer insists it's all genes and that he'd come out on top wherever he'd end up. Outside, the cripple called Billy Ray Valentine is harassing a woman, and two police officers walk up to him. They say they have had complaints about a cripple disturbing people, and lift him up, and suddenly he has legs, and can see. Valentine says it's a miracle, he got his legs back and can see, walking away, trying to get away. He sees a police car in his way, and starts walking backwards, straight into Louis, knocking him back, saying he's so sorry. Louis starts yelling for help, pleading for his life, telling him not to shoot him. The police hear them screaming for help and run after Valentine. They start running around in circles inside the club, and more police arrive. Eventually they manage to stop him. Randolph asks what's going on, and Louis says he tried to rob the payroll. Valentine says it was an accident, and they don't believe him. Louis says he wants to press full charges against him. Randolph suddenly asks if he's from a broken home, and Valentine answers he is. As they drag him away, Randolph tells Mortimer that Valentine is a product of a poor environment, and can prove there's nothing wrong with him. Mortimer says it of course is something wrong with him, that he probably has been stealing since he could crawl. Randolph bets Valentine can run their company as good as Louis, and Mortimer says he will take that bet, but that they would need to get rid of Louis then. Randolph remarks they've done it before, and asks how much he'll bet. Mortimer replies their usual amount. That night, Penelope tells Louis he's so brave, that he could have been killed. Louis says his instincts took over, that it's either kill or be killed. Suddenly, Penelope says she wants him now, and Louis tells Coleman they'll skip dessert. Soon after, Coleman gets a call from one of the Duke brothers, who says they need him to do a couple of things for them if he wants to stay an employee. Coleman agrees, hangs up, and comments they are scumbags. In the living room, Louis is telling Penelope they're going to make a great couple when suddenly Coleman enters asking if they'll need him anymore, and they respond they won't. In a prison cell, Valentine is bragging about how he beat up 10 cops with his kung fu techniques that Bruce Lee taught him. Two guys say he was crying like a pussy when he came in last night, and Valentine says he was tear gassed, but still walked in like a man. Valentine then tells them he'd be out of there only if his people knew, but since his phone and his limousine was broken, he couldn't contact them. The two guys have heard enough, walking up to him, and Valentine starts threatening them, and yells for help. A police officer suddenly appears saying he made bail. He walks out, and then a limousine appears, and Randolph asks him to jump in. Valentine is first suspicious about their intent, but then they tell him they were the ones that bailed him out. He gets into the car, and they tell him they run a program to rehabilitate culturally disadvantaged people, offering a home, a car, employment at their firm, and $80,000 a year to start. Valentine asks the chauffeur if it's a practical joke, and he shakes his head. They tell him they can stop and he could walk out on them forever. Valentine thinks it over for a second and then says he can hang out with them for a while. They arrive at his new home, and Coleman greets them. Mortimer explains Coleman is his new servant, asking if he wants a bath. Coleman helps him, and Valentine starts singing. Outside Coleman asks what he should do with his clothes, and Mortimer tells him to send it to the laundry since he'll have to have something to wear back to the ghetto when he's won the bet. Later, they explain to Valentine this is his house now, that everything he sees is his, 
but he can't believe it. In disbelief, he starts playing with a vase, saying out loud he can do whatever he wants then, but mistakenly drops it. He says he's sorry, and they say it's perfectly okay, that it was his vase. Valentine asks if the vase was fake, and Randolph says they bought it for $35,000, but tells Mortimer they estimated it to $50,000 for the insurance company, remarking Valentine just made them $15,000. Valentine asks if he should destroy something else, but, well. Later, a man on the street points at Louis, and the brothers nod. Mortimer remarks he hopes Beeks won't screw this up. A bell sounds, and all the people in the Heritage Club walk into a room, and Mr. Beeks suddenly puts something in Louis's pocket. They sit down, after which a man says there's something rotten in the Heritage Club, that for the first time in 208 years, they have a thief in the club. He remarks that this man is no ordinary thief like the man attacking Louis the other day, but a hundred times lower, introducing Mr. Beeks of Lindhurst's security. Beeks asks all members to stand up and empty the pockets of the gentleman standing to their right. He then says they mark three $50 bills with red X's, that less than 10 minutes ago were stolen from a coat in a cloakroom. He walks up to Louis, and picks up the bills, showing everyone. Randolph comments he's glad Louis's parents aren't alive to see this, and they drag him away. At the police station, Beeks whispers something to an officer. Later, they go through Louis's stuff, and suddenly the officer finds Angel Dust, saying he's looking at three to five mandatory, and Louis yells it's not his. Meanwhile somewhere else, Valentine walks into a bar he's been to before, yelling champagne for everybody. All the people cheer, and women get interested in him. The two guys from the other night are there, and they walk up to him, saying this man was in the tank with them, bragging on his limousine. Valentine says it happens to be his limousine right outside and tells them to go and look. Outside, Coleman greets the two as they come out. Suddenly Valentine invites them all for cocktails at his house. Later that night, as they are partying, Valentine finds people putting out cigarettes on his expensive rugs, and behaves carelessly. Suddenly, the party starts getting out of control, and Valentine tries to get people's attention, stopping the music, and yells at everybody to get out. People start leaving, and as they're all out, Valentine yells at them not to disturb his neighbors. At the police station, Beek stops a woman called Ophelia, asking her a favor. Penelope is there waiting when Louis suddenly comes out. She tells him he looks awful and smells, and the two walk out. As Penelope explains he's been fired from Duke and Duke and that her mother wants her to call off their wedding, Ophelia and Beeks are signing to each other. As Louis swears he's not a drug dealer, and Penelope is about to forgive him, Ophelia suddenly appears kissing him, saying she'll do all those things he likes. Penelope gets outrageous, saying it's over, and leaves. Ophelia suddenly says it's a joke, having received $100 from a man. Next up, Ophelia has paid for a cab, asking if he's seriously going to give her $70 for getting him home, and he replies his butler Coleman will give it to her as soon as he gets home. They arrive, but as he knocks on the door, Coleman opens and asks him to go away. Louis is shocked, and starts knocking and yelling, and Coleman opens, saying if he doesn't go, he'll call the police. Instead, Louis goes to the bank to take out some money, but then the manager comes out, saying the IRS has frozen his accounts, repossessing his credit cards, after which he's thrown out. He asks Ophelia why someone is deliberately trying to ruin him. Ophelia says she'll just go home now, and Louis starts yelling he has $150,000 in that bank, but that she doesn't care because she helped them do this to him. He gets up, and she concludes he has soft hands, remarking he's never done a hard day's work in his life, saying she'll regret this but tells him to get in. As Louis is upset, suddenly Valentine stops beside their cab, commenting he looks like the man who busted him, and Louis sticks his head out yelling that's his car. Valentine tells Coleman there's something strange going on, and Coleman says he doesn't want to be late for his first day at work. He walks in, and is told the Dukes are waiting for him down the hall. Valentine gets there, and they tell him to sit down at a table. They start explaining they are commodities brokers, explaining they buy and sell things like coffee, wheat, pork bellies, gold, and frozen orange juice. Some of their customers speculate the price of these things are going to go up, and others that they will go down. They place the order with their firm, and they buy and sell for them. The good part is that whether their customers make or lose money, Duke and Duke make commissions. Somewhere else, Ophelia and Louis arrive at Ophelia's home. Louis is complaining about what they did to him, and suddenly Ophelia stops him, saying cabs, food and rent cost money, telling him she expects a lot in return for helping him. She says she only got her body and her mind going for her in this world, and has managed to save $42,000 in T-bills that are earning interest. 
Louis figures out she's a prostitute, and Ophelia tells him that she's proposing a business deal, that she'll help him back on his feet if he pays her five figures in cash. She tells him he sleeps on the couch. At Duke and Duke, Mortimer says the price on pork bellies has hit rock bottom and they should buy, but Valentine says it's a big mistake. Randolph gets curious why he thinks that, and Valentine explains the price has fallen all morning, and since Christmas is around the corner, people with contracts are panicking and want to sell as much as they can before they have no money left to give their wife and children gifts. Randolph says he's right and remarks he just saved him a fortune, and Mortimer comments money isn't everything. Next up, it's Christmas Eve, and as Louis sees Valentine in the newspaper, he swears he'll give a Christmas present Valentine will never forget. At Duke and Duke, at a Christmas party, Valentine walks up to Randolph and Mortimer, saying he found a check to a Mr. Beeks worth $10,000, but saw no Mr. Beeks working for the company. They tell him Mr. Beeks did stuff for them before he joined the company. As Valentine returns to his office, he sees Louis planting drugs in his drawer. Louis starts yelling he found drugs, and the Duke brothers walk in. He shows them Valentine is a pusher, but Valentine says Louis is obviously trying to frame him and calls security. Louis gets mad and picks up a gun. When security arrives, Louis threatens to shoot them, walks to the door, and then runs away. As Valentine cleans up, he saves some of it. A while later, while smoking on the toilet, Randolph and Mortimer walk in, and Valentine tries to hide. The brothers settle their bet, and Randolph wins one dollar. They remark how they managed to make a successful, honest man into a criminal, and a worthless, homeless guy into a successful businessman. Randolph asks how they will get Louis back, and Mortimer replies he neither wants Valentine nor Louis on the company, saying they should hire someone new after Mr. Beeks have got that crop report. Valentine, who heard everything, sees Louis on his way out, but doesn't catch up before Louis has walked out and stepped on a bus. Louis gets home, and moments later Valentine appears asking for Louis. Louis has locked himself in the bathroom, and Valentine has to kick the door in. Next, Louis wakes up in his old bed, thinking he's dreamt it all. But as he sees Valentine, he jumps up, choking him. They stop him, and Valentine starts explaining how the Dukes used them both as guinea pigs, and Coleman confirms it's true. As he learns they ruined his life over a one dollar bet, he begins fixing his guns. Suddenly on the TV, Ophelia sees the man that paid her, and as the TV comments Mr. Beeks of Lindhurst Security carries the crop report, both Valentine and Louis remark he got paid by the Duke brothers, $60,000 in total. At his job, Valentine secretly listens to a call between the Duke brothers and Mr. Beeks where to meet and deliver a copy of the crop report. Next up, Mr. Beeks is taking a train to New York on New Year's Eve. Some guys loading the train are loading a gorilla. In a train cabin, Valentine suddenly walks in pretending to be an African exchange student. Next, Coleman appears, pretending to be a drunk Irishman. Lastly, Ophelia comes in as a girl from Sweden and asks Mr. Beeks to help her with her bag, and as he does, Valentine quickly switches briefcase with Mr. Beeks. The guys having loaded the gorilla leave the luggage compartment, and pass Valentine who walks to the toilet to hand Louis the briefcase. Soon after, Louis joins them in the cabin, and they manage to switch the briefcases again, but this time Beeks sees and picks up a gun. He forces them all to go out, and as they walk through the party railroad car, a man gets interested in Ophelia and starts following them. In the luggage compartment, as Beeks tells them the party is over, the man following them exclaims the party has just started, that New Year's Eve is in several hours. Beeks hits him unconscious and the gorilla gets furious, hitting Beeks unconscious too. They tie him up, and put the gorilla costume on him. As the two luggage guys come back, they remark one of them seems to be kinda horny, and that the black one must be a female. In New York later, Randolph and Mortimer arrive, seeing Mr. Beeks in the shadows. Beeks asks for the money, telling them to hand it over, after which he hands them the report, and the two wish Mr. Beeks a happy new year. Next up, Coleman asks them to try not to lose his life savings, but Valentine calms him down by replying he'll soon be the richest butler who ever lived. Valentine says their train is here, and Louis kisses Ophelia goodbye. The two then take the train, and not long afterwards, outside the World Trade Center, the two arrive. Louis explains Wall Street tactics, and Valentine exclaims they're gonna kill them. Inside, the Dukes tell a man they want him to buy as much orange juice as possible, and the man tells them the crop report will be broadcasted in an hour, and they respond they don't care. As the bell rings, and the markets open, Louis and Valentine act calmly, and suddenly Louis exclaims, let's kick some ass. They walk out to the trading floor, and Louis explains how it all works, saying the Dukes will buy orange juice like crazy, pushing the price up, and when it's high enough, they will start short selling. 
People note the dukes are trying to corner the market and jump in on it too. The price is rising, and suddenly, as it hits 142, Valentine and Louis start selling. The dukes note something is wrong, that the price is going down, and as they see Valentine and Louis selling, they realize that the copy of the crop report they got probably was fake. While Louis and Valentine are selling, the dukes are trying to find their man to stop him from buying. Suddenly the Secretary of Agriculture appears on TV, and he announces that the cold winter has not affected the orange harvest. People immediately start selling like crazy, and Valentine and Louis stop selling and wait. As the price has hit 46, the two start buying everything they can. The dukes try to sell, but then suddenly the market closes. Louis and Valentine get extremely happy, and the dukes are shocked to see them, asking how they could do this to them. They say they made a bet, whether they could become rich themselves and at the same time put them in the poorhouse. Louis lost, giving Valentine one dollar. Men come up to the brothers, claiming margin call, saying their accounts have to be settled. The brothers say they don't have $394 million in cash to settle it, and the men remark they will have to seize all assets of the Duke and Duke company, as well as all personal holdings of Duke and Duke. Randolph almost gets a heart attack, and Mortimer gets extremely mad. Valentine asks Louis rhetorically what happened to Mr. Beeks. Somewhere, two men loading a ship remarks the gorillas are shipped to Africa for some scientific experiment. Some time later, on a tropical island, Valentine and Coleman are on the beach with two beautiful women. From a yacht, Louis yells to Valentine he's looking good, and Valentine replies, yelling back he's feeling good. The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.